Good afternoon, this is Matt Lindsay with Precision Home Group here in Anchorage. Hey, coming to you today talking to you about real estate and one thing that I wanna tell you is quit being a nerd. That's right, we have so many people out here talking terminology in real estate and not actually using the application behind it in the real world. So a lot of people get caught up they, uh, you know, in the book smarts, they get caught up in the terminology, they get caught up in the things that they're learning and have to see it in the real world versus what there is, uh, what you actually do in the real world versus what, what is actually applicable and things to look at. Now the big thing that I'm talking about now is I've had several clients come up to me or people um, interested in real estate who have been doing a lot of research but not necessarily talking to people who are doing, um, and they're, hey, we need to have a certain cap rate that, uh, in, uh, in order to buy a fourplex. In order to buy some type of residential multifamily, it's gotta be at a certain cap rate. And I asked them, I say, hey, that's great, I totally understand, you know, I acknowledge them. And then I asked them, what is a cap rate? And then I get this long drawn out conversation, kind of not really um, to the point, not really describing what the cap rate is um, or what some of these other terms are that we're talking about. And so with that being said, you know, it takes a little bit more education, but to show them, hey, how do we come up with the cap rate? Does it always make sense? Is that the only thing we're gonna look for in a multifamily property? Is it the only thing we're gonna look for specifically in a smaller residential multifamily property? Now, I'm not necessarily gonna be looking at a cap rate when I'm looking at um, residential multifamily properties, especially here in the Anchorage area. Now, our market is so small that when we're looking at cap rates, um, you know, we don't have enough inventory, we don't have enough properties like properties that necessarily demand a, a similar type cap rate for those properties. Yeah, we have a ton of fourplexes that, uh, you know, have flooded the market that have been oversold, overpriced. But if I was to go in and say, hey, I'm going to sell these all at the specific cap rate with no account for what the rents are, what the deferred maintenance is and everything else um, within the properties, then, you know, I'm not doing my job as a realtor, especially if I'm representing the buyer. So let's answer it right off the bat. What is a cap rate? A cap rate is a relationship between the NOI, the net operating income, and the, pri the purchase price or the valuation price of that property. Now when we look at that, what we say is the first thing is that NOI, the net operating income. In order to get the, the net operating income, we need to understand what that is. Not everybody really understands what that is or what expenses come out before the net operating income. Now, how do we get this, this term, this net operating income? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the gross income from the property, all the money that you make for the year, and we're gonna annualize everything out, never run it monthly, we're gonna annualize it out. So we're gonna look at all the income you've made over the last year on one property. Okay, we're gonna list that out. So if it is a multifamily property, we're gonna look at rents, right? We're gonna look at the rents for the units, then we're gonna look at, hey, is there any additional income? Maybe laundry, maybe storage units, maybe garage space, maybe, uh, parking agreements, there are other sources of income. So we're gonna add all that up and that's gonna give us the gross income. Then we're gonna minus our, our expenses. Now our expenses are gonna be all the utilities on the property, management on the property. It's gonna be repairs on the property. It's going to be, uh, you know, everything else there is, you know, snow maintenance, removal, yard maintenance. Um, and with the maintenance and repairs on the property, we gotta throw that in, itemize everything out. We're looking at legal, we're looking at everything else within that property, right? So we're gonna plug all those in and we're gonna subtract that out and we're gonna get our net operating income. Now this net operating income does not include debt service, okay? So if it included debt service, it would skew the numbers and we wouldn't necessarily be able to get accurate numbers for um, evaluation of the property because if people are buying cash, they don't have that expense, so it's not factored in before that. So that's how you find that net, net operating income. However, here in Anchorage, here in the area, a lot of people don't itemize all their expenses correctly. You may see gas, electric, water, sewer, and trash, utilities. That's all you're gonna see. 
Anytime you look at a fourplex, I'd say 99% of the time, that's all the utilities you're gonna see, all the expenses you're gonna see, you're not gonna see maintenance, you're not gonna see anything else. So is that a true net operating income? No, in my opinion, it is not a true NOI. And so by applying a cap rate to that NOI, you're getting an incorrect number, incorrect valuation, and it's being overpriced. And that's the reality of it. So when people come to me and talk to me about, hey, I gotta find a cap rate, I gotta find a fourplex at this cap rate, you know, first and foremost, you know, I'm like, great. Well, what is it that you really want? What is your goal at the end of the day? What is it that we're trying to do? Because we can help you. We can help you get that goal. We can help you attain whatever it is you're trying to do. We're not gonna do it through this cap rate idea, okay? And so that's why we don't use cap rates, especially for small residential multifamily properties. We're gonna start using that for larger properties and especially commercial properties, but not necessarily residential. Now, when the appraiser goes in, they're not looking at what's the cap rate. They're going to do a residential appraisal on this multifamily property. They're gonna do the cost analysis to build. They're also gonna do a comparative properties. So they're gonna look at other properties in the area and base it off of co uh, comparative sales that recently happened. So not even the appraisers are necessarily doing this cap rate. So that's something else to keep in mind. Now back to it, what did we say the cap rate was? Was a relationship between the net operating income, which we just explained, and the valuation of the property. So once we have that NOI, we can multiply it by whatever that cap rate is, and it's gonna give you that valuation. Now the second reason, second of many reasons why we don't use that cap rate for uh, residential multifamily properties is because when we look at that valuation of that property, if we're looking at it as a true investment, well then we need to see what the income of that property is, right? And so what we're seeing right now is that a lot of the properties are overpriced for the income that they have coming in. So we're seeing, you know, properties in the 300,000s, you know, 350, 375, you know, four, four unit buildings, you know, rents, you know, maybe, maybe 800 to 1,000. I'm seeing buildings in the 600,000s still with some rents in the thousands, undervalued, and they're trying to demand a higher price even though their rents are, 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 are below, are subprime, are below what market says they should be, are below what that valuation of that property says they should be. So these are just some of the reasons why I believe we need to be looking at way more things than the cap rate and why I educate my clients to be looking at the whole picture because we haven't even started talking about deferred maintenance. We haven't even started talking about the reserves. We haven't even started talking about everything else. And already we're starting to see that some of these deals aren't penciling. So don't be a nerd. Don't be looking at just the terminology. Don't get caught up in this real estate mumbo jumbo about all these different things. Yes, it's interesting, it's fun, um, it's good to learn, it's good to dig deep, it's good to understand what this all means. But at the end of the day, if we're not looking at practicality, if we're not looking at real life application, then we're gonna miss the mark and you're gonna get yourself into a bad deal. So, what do you do about it? You gotta make sure that when you're learning the book smarts and learning the terminology, you're also getting the real world application. So if you want help with that, if you want to help analyzing a deal and seeing, hey, what is really going on? How do I use this? How do I plug this in? How do I actually apply the knowledge I'm learning in the books and put it into the real world? I'd love to help you with that. I'd love to actually walk through these steps, these problems, um, analyzing deals, whatever it is. So reach out to me, Matthew at PrecisionHomeGroup.com. Shoot me a DM here on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, wherever you're watching. And or drop me a comment below and I'd love to help you. That's why we're here. That's why I've built Precision Home Group. You can contact me, any of the agents who work here at Precision, and we are all on the same page about this. So you guys have a great day. We are gonna continue our real estate investing talks for the rest of this month. That's what January is all about. We're talking real estate investing before we move on to some other topics. So if you have questions, reach out. We'll even do a video about it. Thanks for joining. You guys have a great day.